Baby, it's okay. You're dreaming. Sweetheart, we've got to go. I'm gonna miss my flight. Okay. It seemed tense. You didn't have that dream again, did you? No. I'm just anxious about the meeting. I've got to make this guy talk. Or else my story sucks, Griff will never buy it, and there goes my internship. Well, just be firm. Don't let him intimidate you. It's easier said than done. The guy's tough. You know intimidation is not exactly my strong suit. Hey, you're smart, kiddo. I know you can do it. All right, remember, nerves are steel. I'll try. Don't try, just do it. Be a good girl, honey. I'm always good. Looks like it's gonna be a short flight. Not short enough as far as I'm concerned. They never give us enough leg space. <laughs> You're right about that. So what brings you to San Francisco? A story on a city bigwig who's been implicated in a huge sex scandal. How exciting. Who do you write for? Where magazine. Great articles. You live in LA? Yeah. Do you? I now spend most of my time up north. We have a home in Napa Valley. Mm. I love the weather. I have space to think, ride my horses. It's so hard to focus in L.A. My husband, though, he prefers the house by the beach. God, it must be beautiful up there right now. Storybook green, right? <laughs> I went to Catholic boarding school up there. Nothing but green pastures and cows. Oh, we replaced the milk with the wine, <laughs> darling, a long time ago. How funny, I went to Catholic boarding school myself. You didn't. <laughs> you know, my husband always teases me. He says that that's why I'm so screwed up. Four years without boys. Mm, my husband would agree. And you know what? They're probably, probably right. right. <laughs> parking card shows you didn't check out of the garage until midnight that night. Sometimes I work late. Well, can you tell me why Beverly was at your office the night of the rape? She wasn't at my office. I saw her waiting at the bus stop, out of my window. That was never in the police report. There was never a bus scheduled for that line that night. How could she have been waiting for a bus that was never scheduled? I'm gonna try to say this in a nice way, about something that could get extremely ugly. It would be very wise of you not to proceed with your inquiry. Good, we agree. There is no story. You'll excuse me, Miss Barton. for Mrs. Barton, please. Elizabeth? Oh, my God, what are you doing here? My flight was canceled, the fog. Mine, too, isn't this crazy? 
Bob, this is the woman I was telling you about. We met on the way out. Pleasure. Nice to meet you. Join us for a nightcap? Oh, come on, live a little dangerously. <laughs> It'll be fun. Why not? Excuse me. I didn't realize your husband was joining you up here. Bob? Oh, he's not my husband. Oh, come on, darling. Don't say you didn't figure it out. Writers always figure it out. Wouldn't you say, Bob? You're interested in character, aren't you? Oh, yeah. And I'm interested in dessert. Real decadent and sweet. I'll call you back in L.A. Okay. Good night. <laughs> So what you're saying is a year ago we would have qualified. I'm afraid with the change in your wife's salary, it makes it rather impossible at this time. Due to the change in your wife's salary, you call what they pay a salary? Honey, interns don't... Yeah, but Christ, Christ, 75K a year placing executives, you had it made. Never having to leave the house, never having to leave your study. Come on, honey. We both knew it was going to be tough in the beginning. Recruiting made me miserable. You don't want me to be miserable, do you? Yeah, but it's been over a year now. I mean, why not at least try another publication? What's so big about Wear Magazine, anyway? Griffin, he's the best editor in town. That's right. Your mentor, the one who changed your life one college afternoon. That must have been one hell of a lecture. Eric, stop it. Look, I'm pretty sure he'll use the piece I'm turning in today. Then I'll be on staff. And everything's gonna be okay. All right? Come on. Why do you always pretend, Laura, that you don't hear what I say when I don't damn well that you hear what I say? Do you want me to believe that you're stupid? Because if you do, I will. As for you, young lady, this happens to be a business, not a hobby between getting your hair done and having lunches. Your story's late, where is it? right here. Elizabeth, the first line doesn't work. The story does. I hope so, for your sake. Staff meeting tomorrow morning, 10 a.m. sharp. Try to be there. For our theme issue on sexual identities, Julie is going to cover the piece on married men and their infidelities. Be careful with your research, Julie. <laughs> <laughs> and Carl, you have a handle on the gay dating service issue? Um, all over it, Griff. I'll cover the demographics. Good. That makes four features. But I want to have a fifth. If I don't have an acceptable idea by noon tomorrow, I believe there might be a little trouble in paradise. Elizabeth, in my office. You had a pretty good story going there, but you went down. Have a seat. I disagree. I think it works. Bullshit. 
It's very obvious that you backed off. Elizabeth, you should have dug in. You should have nailed that lawyer man right there at the end. You should have just confronted him and taken him down. No guts, no story. The thing what is, is I... the thing? Griff, your wife's on too. I can't talk to her right now. Would you please tell her I love you and I'll call her back in a few minutes? Let me tell you what the thing isn't. The thing isn't Junior League. This is journalism, and journalism is telling the truth. If you can't tell the truth, then we do have a problem. You're gonna have to get tough, Elizabeth. The thing is, Don't I just... Don't tell me what the thing is. We all have our demons. Now, the bottom line is, if you can't confront your demons and nail your endings, well, then maybe you just don't belong here. Will you please excuse me? I'd like to call my wife. My sauce came out great. to the story? No. Actually, yes. He said he didn't like it. Griff? Well, what'd he say? He told me not to give up my day job. Happy now? It's not the end of the world, Lizzie. Maybe not for you. San Francisco last week? <laughs> yeah, sure. How are you? Good. I just called to say hi. I see how you were doing. I really enjoyed our time together. So did I. It was fun. So how is everything? Great. How's Bob? Oh, behaving himself, though not with me. And I've been really curious about something. I mean, I know that it's none of my business, so feel free to tell me to shut up at any time. But I have to ask, have there been others like Bob? Never. What do you think? I mean, I can't actually believe I'm doing something like this. Never in my wildest dreams. I wasn't looking, you understand. It just happened. Is it serious? I don't know. I'm confused. You know, I come from a very sheltered, protected background. Oh, God, I can't believe I'm telling you all this. She tries to resist, but the chemistry's too good. It's like some weird kind of fate. But of course, she's torn with that nagging guilt. She's a good girl, and good girls don't indulge in affairs. She married too soon. She didn't sow any wild oats. Hey, I know a lot of women who married number one, and they're doing just fine. This isn't about right or wrong. It's about her reactions to what's going on. The drama, the deceit, the guilt, the self-loathing. But then there's the raw passion, the thrill, the whole crushing experience. I think that's what the special issue is about, sexual discovery. This is a woman in transition, coming out of her cocoon. What's the school? Anatomy of an affair. A first-timer. The virgin adulteress. The virgin adulteress. The virgin adulteress. That's good. Very good. Maybe even excellent. Catholic girl goes astray, but not too far. Mm, very nice. But Elizabeth, the terrain, infidelity, adulterous sexual activity, isn't that foreign territory for you? You may need a passport. <laughs> <laughs> I think I can handle it. You do? 
Yes, I do. Well, I hope so for your sake, because if you don't have a rough draft in two weeks, you may want to consider a new source of employment. Put that cigarette out. Look, just do the best you can and don't worry about it. Okay. <laughs> I loved your presentation. You were so great. Yeah? yeah? How'd you get that woman to open up? I don't know. It's weird. It's almost like she wants to. Do you believe it's possible to have an affair and not have it affect your marriage? I don't know. I mean, she seems to think so, and she's living it. God, Laura, she seems so free. I don't believe it. I mean, it's bad karma. You put that kind of energy out there, and it's bound to come back and hurt you. You know, you should call my psychic, Kalia. She's so in tune. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm serious. Uh, I don't know, but, you know, it sounds a little kinky. <laughs> kinky? Yeah. Why is it okay for a man to have an affair, and a woman has an affair, and it's kinky? Well, maybe I don't want you getting any ideas. This is not about me. Liz, you don't start that again. I told you, I haven't been with anybody else since we've been married. God, you're so insecure. I wasn't talking about you. I was talking about her. You know, it would be really nice if you were a little supportive from time to time. Don't taste it. He eats garlic. That's probably her now. Here, stir my sauce. Hello? Well, why don't you tell me how you met me? This is great, Anne. I can't believe how much we covered. Look, let's meet at the beach tomorrow. I'll see you then. Oh, God, yes. I'm so nervous. So where did it finally happen? The Miramar. On Santa Monica. Mm-hmm. Yes. We got a room at the hotel, and we had lunch sent up with champagne. It was absolutely divine. He was so sweet and adoring in the sex. It was amazingly great. God, I don't mean to be so blunt, but I never had sex like that. I just didn't know it existed. So it was like, you mean there's this? You know the sweetest thing? Mm. He sent a bouquet of roses to the house with a card the next day. This is just so strange. Remember how you were telling me about how you first met Bob, standing in line at the movies and having coffee afterwards, and now making love for the first time at the Miramar and getting roses and a note later? Mm -hmm. It's almost exactly like it happened with Eric and I. No, you're serious? Yes. I think it's time we had that fabulous bottle of wine that we brought. Here you go. Either you and I are incredibly alike, or that's an awfully bizarre coincidence. <laughs> Cheers. Two coincidences. Coincidences. Beth, I hate to say this, but I've decided to like it. Screwing someone else besides my husband. This is just so hard to believe. Darling, look, you and I were the good girls, prim and proper. Married the first man we slept with. Love and happiness forever after. But that was then. This is now. And I'd like to think that I'm a bit of a late bloomer. And that I have a whole lot of experience ahead of me. I can do absolutely anything with him. Do you know how great that is? To be like that with someone? Whenever you want, whatever fantasy you want. You make it sound so amazing. Eric makes me feel like a woman. That's good. Like a sexy woman? Sexy? Well, sure. Whatever <laughs> that means. Do you play games? Well, well, we used to. Eric can be passionate. I could go home and dress up, and I know it would drive him crazy. Eric can take me in his arms and make love to me for hours. And I know he really appreciates me. Eric and I are... What are you doing? What's gotten into you? Do you like it? Lizzie, I don't need that to find you attractive. I told you, I'm perfectly happy with Eric. All right. 
Admit it, you're curious. You don't even have your tape recorder on. You're asking me all this stuff now because you want to know, not professionally, personally. I thought this was going to be about sex, but it's not. It's about disobedience and empowerment. To disobey the rules others may just live by. And living with what works for us, for me. But tell me truthfully, you don't feel guilty making love to Bob? You can live with yourself. There's no dirty feeling. No sense of betrayal. It's not living with myself. It's living for myself. And as for betrayal, my husband forged that one a long time ago. He's chosen to get disinvolved, so I get involved elsewhere. Look, having an affair is having an affair. You go, you do it, and then you go home. Everything stays exactly the same. Imagine that you met someone new, handsome as hell, and just looking at it made you hot. And circumstance made it so you could go to bed together. <sighs> yes, you could. No one would know. You could do it and your life would stay exactly as it is. You could do it and love every fucking minute of it. I couldn't. I wouldn't. But what if you could? Hi, we're not home. Leave a message. Thought you were here. kick out of eavesdropping on Bob and me. Almost like being here. He's so great. He's out with some friends. I'm kind of working tonight. Well, I still want you guys to come over for dinner. We'd love to come, thanks. Okay, bye. I'll see you later. Get the tape. Her message sounded frantic, but I couldn't quite make it out. Uh, I think your imagination's getting the best of you. Look, I just don't want to miss her call again. And there's something definitely off with that answering machine. Yeah, but Steve and Mary are expecting both of us. Come on, honey. Come on. Night out will do us good. Relax, unwind, a little wine. I want to. Just not tonight. I have to stay here. You are so selfish, you know that? Spending your days in there stagnating? I'm sick of this writing thing, this, this fucking little hobby. You're my wife.
so raw, so primal. And my liver wants the same thing I do, fulfillment. You should try it. Darling, the romance fades from everyone's marriage eventually. the answering machine off. It said to be a couple days, so I got a replacement. I took the tape out. It's uh, on your desk. Any news about Ann? No. There's something really wrong with her not calling. The number being disconnected. I can just feel it. The woman came to her senses. That's what happened. I mean, why should she expose herself for affair? She bailed out. She would tell me. We got close. Please, you just met. Face it, Lizzie, she's gone. So's your story. No! It's not over. Maybe it's a different story. Maybe it's a bigger story. Don't you get it, Eric? I really feel like this is going to be my breakthrough piece. You know how many times I've heard that pathetic line? Drop this whole thing, huh? Come on, give us a chance to finish the house. Build a great life together. Fuck you. Jesus Christ. Why should I give up my dreams like you? Just let them sit in a corner and gather dust like your photography equipment? Why is that okay with you? It's not okay with me. There's so much about us that is not okay. I know. Dinner was canceled last night. Where were you? Just having a drink. Having a couple drinks. By myself alone. Okay? I'm in this, you know, total funk. The acting is like completely back burner. I'm like Bill Holden in Sunset Boulevard, right? And I'm in New York, doing my usual Saturday night at the Pierre Bar. Nightman floats me a double quattro because he knows I like the French stuff, you know, impresses the ladies or whatever. Says he's got a guy from LA who wants to meet me. It's a hush hush thing, but he smells money, right? So right away at me, you know, I'm interested. Anyway, listen to this, by the way. Bob, the newcomer from New York, with a haunting presence, turns in a truly inspiring performance. <laughs> cool. So that's something. Anyway, so I meet the dude, which is what I call him, the dude, right? And he lays out the gig for me, which is all I got to do is I have to initiate an affair with this broad, right? But he's going to give me all the particulars that I need to, like, properly seduce her. No shit. Seriously, I mean, he's giving me all the accoutrements. I'm talking a car, upgraded threads, everything, right? So he shows me a picture, because that's important. I got to see what she looks like, right? And she looks good. I mean, she's almost a babe. It's like, you know, I mean, she's a little bit sedate looking, but I'm thinking, this is no problem. Totally doable, nailable thing. Plus, he got you the lead on the play, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. God, I love this city. 
cockroach to budding star in two months. Mm -hmm. What sort of extension are we talking about? Maybe just a week. You're in trouble, aren't you? No. Then let's have it. Look, I just need a few days to verify some things that she told me. Don't try to bullshit me. What's the real reason? I need to nail my ending. That's all you had to say, Elizabeth. I'll give you one week because I respect your honesty. Elizabeth, which one of these would you go with? That's our choice. So why didn't you tell me you're an actor? Uh, well, because whenever you, uh, you know, say that, people think you're a flake. <laughs> Especially if you're not famous. What's, uh, what's on your mind? Well, I was interviewing Anne for this story I'm doing, and now she's disappeared off the face of the earth. What does that have to do with me? I mean, because if you think I can hook you up with her, you're, you know, you're wrong. Anything personal would really help. No, I see. Anne was, she was real good at keeping her life extra private. So are you saying that you're having a relationship with a woman and you don't know the first thing about her? How is that possible? No, I'm not saying that at all. I know plenty. I know all kinds of things. I know, like, uh, what her favorite foreplay is. I know how she trembles just before she comes. See, I know lots of things about her, pretty private stuff, just not stuff that's right for you or for your little interview. How about her husband? Did she ever mention him, maybe where he works, what he does for a living? Nope, wouldn't have a clue. I'm sure she told you, really, it was no strings attached. Maybe she just, you know, had her fill and thought, enough's enough. <laughs> the last time I spoke to her, she told me that she was falling in love with you. She sounded very excited. <laughs> It's bullshit, <laughs> okay? She was in love with her husband, not me. She had great sex with me. It wasn't love. I think she knows the difference. Well, she's wrong. She didn't sound wrong. Anne could sound a lot of ways, okay? She was very practiced in the art of deception. I have a feeling you're not bad at it yourself. Only when I'm paid to be. I'm an actor. Uh -huh. That's nice. Thank you. She made quite a point of a Catholic boarding school that she went to, graduated at the top of her class. <laughs> What's so funny? A Catholic boarding school at the top of her class? Come on. No, 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 no. And didn't finish high school. Are you sure? I'm positive.
figured it out. God, you scared the hell out of me. What are you doing here? How did you know where I live? Wasn't hard to find. What'd you figure out? Something about Anne? No. About you. See, first, I thought to myself, what is this nice, happily married woman doing writing about extramarital affairs? Doesn't add up. I get paid to be interested. I don't buy it. This isn't about Anne or affairs. This is about you. Portrait of the writer emerging from darkness. It's ridiculous. Is it? <clears throat> You're not looking for Anne. You're trying to find yourself. Look, you don't know anything about me. Huh? Indulge me. I mean, you <laughs> you have taken great care to, to hide your life inside this narrow little comfort zone here. It is so obvious what kind of world you've created for yourself. You are not a successful writer that you should be. Why is that? Because trying to protect ourselves doesn't work. It never does. Life is not about trying to be safe and comfortable. Life is about one thing. It's about living. To be truly alive. Isn't that what you want? To finally be free. I understand that. You see? I get it. I get you. And he doesn't. Does he? Your husband does. Because he is not like us. He's not an artist. <laughs> Sometimes I get so scared. I know you do. But it's calling you. And you gotta follow your heart. Because you don't want to live with regrets, do you? Great, honey. Can you give me a ride to the airport? Sure. Just let me know where and when. All right. Okay. I love you. Like something awful was about to happen Elizabeth, to her. stop obsessing about this. Just drop the story. I can handle it. You know, I don't get you anymore. This sounds dangerous. It's time to back off, okay? I can't back off. I have to do this. I know you probably wouldn't understand. Try me. Life is not about being safe. It's not about pretending. It's about seeing things for what they really are. Like not pretending we're not having problems with our marriage. And then I didn't find a book in the closet from another woman. Obviously a relationship you feel that you have to hide from me. Why can't you let go of the past? Why can't you? You know, I can't get into this right now. I gotta go. You always gotta go! I'm not backing off, Eric! <clears throat> Man, you are good. If I were Griff, I would not want to mess with you. <laughs> I think I feel better. Yeah. <laughs> it's your turn now. Great. Hey, I've been meaning to ask you, how'd that surprise go? What surprise? You know, Eric's sitting next to you on the flight to San Francisco. I thought it sounded very romantic. What are you talking about, Lori? What? His secretary called me and she asked me to book a seat next to you. Eric doesn't have a secretary. He doesn't? So who did sit next to you? Okay, I'm out of here. Here's the number of the detective in New York. I gave him the rundown and I told him to call you with some answers. 
Perfect. Thank you, Laura, your lifesaver. I'm so on top of it, it's scary. Gotta run. Ciao. You have a good one. Good night, Laurie. Well, it's nice to see you here. One might believe you're actually a writer. Yeah, little old me out in the real world living dangerously. Why the long face? You having a little trouble with the article? Why don't we go across the street and have ourselves a drink and we can talk about it? Come on, Griff. You know I don't drink. You're a big girl, Elizabeth. And I'm a good listener. Come on. What the hell? She's in the seat next to me. She's at the same hotel. Make sure she runs into me. Just too many coincidences. It's like she's lying to me about everything. Your subject has become a slippery character. When was the last time you heard from her? Four days ago. Do you know what's really weird? I mean, I can't quite explain it, but it's like she wants me to write this article. Like she found me. I'll give her a couple of days. Do you have any leads to go on? Maybe. There's this guy. Her lover? Yes. But he doesn't seem to know anything. Griffin, how do you know when your mate is having an affair? I'm sure there are signs, intimate ones, but I wouldn't know about that. Why are you always so hard on me? I mean, ever since I came here, it's like I can do nothing right. Elizabeth, you have the potential to fly, but you're still crawling. And there is another reason why I had to keep my distance. I know why. It's because you're a professional and I'm nothing but a scandalous freshman. Believe me, I get it. Elizabeth, ever since we first met when I was lecturing at Columbia University, I saw how much alike we are. I've watched you blossom into this incredibly amazing woman. And I've always known that you had it in you to be an incredible journalist. You think I'm good? Yes, I do. Why didn't you ever tell me? What I didn't count on was, was falling in love with you, Elizabeth. Let me just say, I think we would be a great team. I think we could have an amazing life together. Would you care to discuss this at another time? caught me off guard. Listen, I think I might have some good news for you. I, um, I found Anne's hotel receipt. Maybe it'll help. Well, when can I get it? Oh, um, how about tomorrow night? After my show. Really? Yeah. You could, uh, you could come over. You have the address, right? It's on the card with the flowers. Okay. I'll be there. Okay. Good. Can't wait to see you. Wait a minute, Bob. Yeah. One more thing. Where were you last Wednesday? Hmm. I was... <laughs> I was doing my play. Well, did you see Anne afterwards? No. Uh, wish I did. Let me see. I, uh, I came home. I finished this bio I was reading on Olivier. I, uh, made a pot of coffee, mocha bean, um, I smoked a cigar, brushed my teeth, had a pint of great ice cream. All right, I get the picture. <laughs> Wait, what flavor? Oh, 
Um, peanut butter swirl. Mmm. I hope this was free tooth brushing. <laughs> Let's grab sure. a coffee. Yeah. Can we have a cup of iced coffees, please? Thank you. Yeah, here you go. How's the story coming along? Mm, good. As a matter of fact, I have a date tonight to pick up a piece of the missing puzzle. And who has that piece? Friend of a friend. Does his friend play a part in the fantasy? You could say that. But it's just a fantasy, right? Lori, I'm just doing my job. I know. I believe you. Have you heard from the detective in New York about Bob? Not yet. He always delivers. God, I hope so. Come in. It's open. Hi. Hi. Welcome to my beautiful abode. Wow, it's great. Thanks. Congratulations. I read your reviews. They're really great. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like I'm uh, finally starting to get the recognition I deserve. Kiss or kill? <laughs> I like that. Me too. So now, make yourself comfortable and relax. Take your coat off. Thanks. I think we should have a drink. Here's to being absolutely, totally, 100% alive. Truly alive. <laughs> I have a feeling you know a lot about that. <laughs> I do. Oh my god, I can't believe you have that picture. Mm. I have the same exact one in my house. Really? I've had that since high school. Me too. No way. When I first saw it, I was truly amazed. <laughs> you box too? Yes, I do. <laughs> so do I. You do? A little bit. Let me get that receipt for you. Okay. Here. Thank you. I gotta go. Oh. Where are you gonna go? No fucking way.
Hey, it's me. You there? Lizzie. I miss you. Baby, where are you? I hope everything's okay. Look, things are going great up here. I want to apologize. I'm sorry. I love you. Call me at the hotel. Where's my story, Elizabeth? Your time's up. What if I can't do this? Yeah, this is Detective James Martin. I've got that information you requested. Yeah, I'm gonna fax through the rap sheet on this guy. He's a seasoned criminal with several felonies on his record. You should be real careful around him. checked out. Are you sure? Yes, positive. Yeah, okay. Thank you. We checked out. <laughs> Where are you when I need you? Where the fuck are you? something here. Can you make any sense of this? I can make out a first name Jennifer, but that's about it. Last name is too smudged. <sighs> well, is there any other source where it might be? Not on a first time buyer. Nice looking lady, though. Great legs. Well, can you tell what she bought? Sonny A. Miller made a video camera with an automatic timer. She wanted that. For the camera? Sure. Security, surveillance, kinky stuff in the bedroom. <laughs> no, just kidding. She didn't send the type. He did. He? Yeah, the guy with her. Tall, dark, kind of Italian. Passing himself off as an actor. <laughs> Great excuse not to work, if you ask me. Funny, I just called. His order is ready. What order? Made some dupes for him. Copies of a video. It was a rush order, I guess. Something important. I get it for you, but it's not here. We found it out. He's picking it up directly from the lab downtown. Tell them I sent you. Thank you. Hey, come back anytime. i get you a deal on a video. Yeah. Honestly, I don't see one decent photograph of the whole bunch. Well, I, I'll tell you what. It's just one more day. I'm on to something, I swear. Hold on a second. Elizabeth, I need real proof. I'm getting it. Well, leave it here. I'll give it a read. Meet me across the street at 530 and leave your cell phone number. No, not you. Well, honestly, just the thought of looking at him again makes me nauseous. Forget about it. I'm pulling you off the project. Griff, Elizabeth, I'm on to something. 3.35, Brill. I'm gonna be late for our 5.30, but I'll be there. <sighs> Gotta have the guts to know your ending, Beth.
absolute pleasure. <laughs> I think that this changes it. But... No way. Hey, I fulfilled my end of the deal, man. You can't just decide that now. I'm not gonna let you do this. Hey, fuck you, man. We had a deal. The girl is fine. Listen, I'm watching this thing right now. Listen to me. I've got the original and I've got the only copies, okay? So what's it gonna be? Look, if she becomes a problem, I'll take care of her personally. Uh, I'm gonna call you right back. Hey! Elizabeth! Wait up! Check in later. Nailing the ending of your store does not mean the end of you, Elizabeth. Do you have proof? I'm this close. My oh, God, child, what have you gotten yourself into? Lizzie? Honey, where are you? Lizzie? He's scheduled to go on tonight, but he isn't here yet. Damn it. I've got to get that tape. I know that's what Ann was trying to say on my answer. How do you know he has it? Because I snuck over to his place earlier, and I saw him watching it. Lori, I've got to get in there, get it, and get out. You're in way over your head on this. You should be careful. I know. But like Griff says, no guts, no story. Lori, I need you to buy me some time. If he shows up here, just make sure he doesn't leave. Be careful!
believe what I've just seen. What's wrong? Are you all right? Elizabeth, what's wrong? Elizabeth, where are you? Oh, shit. He's Elizabeth. Still here. He's here. Who? Pick me up at the market on Ocean. Please hurry. What's on it? What I saw tonight? Have you spoken to anyone else about this? No one. I mean, I haven't had time. I just came from there. Where? Bob's. Bob? Bob was murdered tonight by... Oh, my God. Oh, my God, by, I think, Eric, but I don't know. I mean, it just happened so fast. Murdered? Well, just relax, Elizabeth. I'll have to take you somewhere where you'll be safe. Are you all right? Where are we going? I just have to make a little detour. I hope you don't mind. Well, where are you taking me? I have a little surprise for you, Elizabeth. <laughs> Did I ever tell you that I hate surprises? <gasps> You surely cannot hide. What is destined to be shall be. Please, my love. What is it? It's for you. I can't. Oh, I think you can. I think we can. Can what? Can do whatever we want. Whatever you want. Elizabeth, we think we know life. We think we know people, but we don't know anything. The only thing I am certain of is my love in you. I never realized I was capable of so much love. Nor of doing what I have unfortunately done. What circumstances have forced me to do. Anne was an exceptionally gifted woman at making people believe what she wanted them to believe. Everyone thought she was such a devoted wife. Wife? Oh, don't worry about that, Elizabeth. The hate in our marriage stemmed from something much more substantial than mere infidelity. She wanted to destroy me. She wanted to destroy all my dreams once she realized that I was no longer in love with her. And she would have taken everything from me. She was as manipulating and cold-blooded as they come. She was peerless in that. But let's not dwell on the morbid. Would you like to have some strawberries? Please. Our life together would be rather extraordinary from now on. Together we will conquer the literary world. For starters, a five-year contract with the magazine starting at a six-figure level. Car, of your choice, of course. How would you like to have a house in Malibu and a penthouse in New York City and a table of your own at Elaine's? We we'll go to all the best places. You and I will travel the world together. Right. Anything your heart desires, you will have. Have you forgotten that I have a husband? Oh, yes, a husband that started this whole dirty thing. The husband that cheated, the husband that lied. The husband that didn't believe in your dreams, just cared about your paycheck, didn't give a damn about you and your life. Yes, your husband. I've been considering this. Your precious husband. How 
what you explain Anne? Apparently, Anne and her lover are on an extended vacation in Barbados. Probably will not be returning, that of course would devastate me, but I will carry on. What about Bob? Sometimes a man's checkered past catches up with him, which requires a hasty departure, usually to a faraway foreign country. <laughs> you certainly have thought of everything. Yes, I have. Let's say I've edited down to a workable piece. <laughs> the bottom line, Elizabeth, is I love you. I know the lifestyle that you want, and I can give you everything you want. There is, however, one thing I must insist upon. We take care of Eric. Take care of? We'll do it together. That will seal our bond of love. I hope you don't mind. I've invited a friend of yours. Eric, thank you for joining us. Please. I'm sure you know the young lady, our new staff journalist. Please have a seat. So you actually made the big time, huh? A staff writer? Oh, yes. Elizabeth is destined for big things indeed. Congratulations, honey. Yes. I was just telling Elizabeth about the apartment. Fascinating story of how I came about finding this place. Wait, I, I thought this place was Anne's. So did Anne. Little did she know she was subletting from me. Eric, I believe you know my wife, Anne, do you not? Uh, possibly. Oh, possibly. Funny. I thought for sure you and my wife were having an affair. <sighs> All right. Lizzie, this guy's out of his mind. Let's get out of here. <laughs> How does that help refresh your memory? Some of those long, lingering afternoons in the Merrimore Hotel with my wife. Or do you need to sit down and collect your thoughts? Pathetic ass in this chair. What is this bullshit? I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. See, he doesn't know anything. He doesn't. Exhibit A, Anne's diary. Let me read a few passages. August 19th, just several months ago. Eric made such a funny joke today about that nitwit wife of his, the writer. The joke was, was she more inexperienced at making love or writing? God, did we laugh. You're lying. I never said that. It's all right here. Eric. No! No, you're lying! He's lying! Is this lying? All right. It happened before we met a swear. Is that being a devoted husband, Eric? I think it's disgusting, making fun of your lovely wife's dreams. I... I knew all along. All right, I had just about enough out of you, you fucking psycho! Man, why do people not believe when someone has a gun they will use it? I have your wife and a gun, and I will use the gun again. Uh, oh, 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 uh, you okay? The gun, get the gun. Okay?
I'm a writer now, a successful single writer. Eric and I tried to work it out, but it was obvious there was nothing left to work out. Of course, Griff wasn't dead. Two weeks ago, I heard that he'd escaped from the sanitarium. They told me that he said that he lived only for me. And it's funny because I almost envy that. I wish I felt that way about someone. Who knows, maybe someday I will. Great work. Thank you. Thanks for coming. And yes, I am writing another one. <laughs> this is exciting. The turnout is so great. I'm so <laughs> proud of you, Lizzie. I'll get you some water. Congratulations, Elizabeth. You've been able to satisfy a lot of people's fantasy. How's that? You shot the boss. Oh. I'd love to take you to dinner. I'm in town for a couple of days. I don't think so. Um, this press tour, it's killing me. But thanks for the offer. <laughs> now that is one good-looking man. Why didn't you accept? Lori, I'm not interested in anything casual. And even the most innocent little affair can end in disaster. I suppose you're right. You can't run, but you surely cannot hide. <sighs> I'm sorry. Are you all right? What happened? Yeah. I'm fine. Can I sign that for you? Yes, please. Here you go. What is destined to be shall be.